Okay, we're going to quickly go over effects sends in Bitwig. Check this out. This is why you would use them and what they're for. If you pull in an instrument or an audio clip or whatever, a track of something into Bitwig, and we have a sound here. This is just a synthesizer. No effects on it. A rookie move would be, if you wanted to add reverb to it, finding reverb in your list and just kind of chucking it at the end here, which will work. All right, good. So we have a reverb on there. Now that's all fine and good. But say now we have another synth. Let's just bring in a poly synth or another instrument of any type. And you want to have reverb for that. Okay, rookie move. Take the reverb, throw it at the end. Now we have a reverb for that. And that works, I guess, right? Not too bad. And then we have um, some drums. And we load up a drum kit. Okay, let's, draw, let's play a pattern in here. And let's play that. Say you wanted to add reverb on that. Rookie move. Just throw drums on, or throw reverb on the track. You got reverb. Now, the problem with doing that is we have three reverbs now in three separate tracks, all eating up our CPU. And if the settings for all three of these reverbs are exactly the same, it's kind of a waste. So, meaning if we want to have the same settings on all three tracks of the same type of reverb, we're, we're wasting it by making three separate reverbs. So, we're going to get rid of them. So, I'm just going to go in over here and right-click and delete the reverb. I just right-click on each one. Delete, delete, and delete. And what we want to do is pop open the mixer, right? You see these effects track over here, this effects channel over here, just chuck a reverb on top of that guy. Now it becomes a reverb channel, which can be used by this synth, this synth, these drums, all separately. Easy as possible, easy as pie, because all you have to do is turn up this knob, and this knob sends the signal to that reverb, and you'll be able to hear the reverb. So let's play the FM synth. No reverb. Reverb, polysynth, no reverb, reverb, acoustic drums, you get the idea. I don't. And so let's record some FM synth over those drums. Actually, we just could play here. Good. Quantize it. And a poly synth. Let's record something here. Good. Play them all. Got the idea? You could even do the same with a delay. So let's take a delay. And if we just pop a delay over right, oops, well, let's right click, add an effects track, and then take a delay and pop it into that track. The knob for that uh, delay channel appears in the mixer. It's so convenient. So now we can add a delay on any one of these guys. We're just going to do it for the FM synth. <laughs> Let's actually shorten this pattern a little bit so it makes more sense. There. And let's play them all. Now, if you wanted to be crazy and add delay to the drums, you can do it here. Get the idea? That's why you would like, that's why you want to use effects channels and effects sends instead of just chucking effects onto an instrument. Now there is a time and place to chuck it, to chuck effects onto an instrument. It's called inserts. We're gonna call we're gonna cover that in another video. But for what we're doing here, for reverbs and delays and like time-based um, effects that you're gonna be using on multiple tracks, 
use effect sends. It saves CPU and it's just a little more proper, a little more cleaner. It's smarter. It's a pro move. Don't be a rookie. I'll see you guys.